Hello students and welcome to our virtual college fair. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, you can ask questions to the panelists at any time using your Q&A button. Just a heads up, your camera and microphone are off so no one can see or hear you. Um, sign up for some more sessions. There's a couple more um, upcoming and available. And also a recording of this session will be available in the next couple of days on the same page where you registered. So now I will turn it over to our presenters. And up first we have Ole Miss. There we go. All right, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Amy Bernstein and I am one of the transfer admissions counselors for the University of Mississippi, uh, including Tennessee. So let's go to the next slide if it will let me. Um, so we were founded in 1848. Uh, the University of Mississippi is Mississippi's flagship institution, simply meaning that we were the first public institution of higher learning in the state. We started off with about 80 students and have grown to about 18,000 undergraduate students who come from every county in Mississippi, every state in the US, and over 80 foreign countries. We are a large public institution, but we are also a small campus. In fact, we are the third smallest in the SEC, which gives us the best of both worlds. We have all the resources and opportunities and fun of a large SEC institution, but we also have all the perks of a smaller institution. Um, like smaller class sizes on average 34 and a smaller student to faculty ratio 19 to 1. Uh, we are located in the small college town of Oxford, Mississippi. And if you have never visited, I highly recommend it. Uh, Oxford is a cultural mecca with its food, art and music scene. Uh, our university thrives off of Oxford's unique cultural richness and welcoming atmosphere and vice versa. I highly recommend that you come visit. Uh, we have over 100 different academic programs. Our oldest and largest academic school is the College, College of Liberal Arts, which holds majors from arts, sciences, social sciences, humanities, health professions. We also have a fantastic school of journalism and new media, and we offer one of the top 25 pharmacy schools in the nation, as well as one of the top 10 accounting programs in the nation. Uh, students can also pursue degree programs in our School of Business, School of Applied Sciences, School of Education, and our School of Engineering. Uh, if, our student, if a student is interested in a pre-professional program or a pre-professional area like pre-med, pre-dental, pre-law, et cetera, we have some fantastic pre-professional advising resources, specifically the Health Professions Advising Office, which advises any student who is interested in a health profession like nursing, physical therapy, med school. This is in addition to your academic advisor, so it creates that extra layer of support. Uh, additionally, we have some competitive programs like the Trent Lott Leadership Institute for Public Policy and Leadership Majors. Um, also, the Sally McDonald Barksdale Honors College is available to transfers as well through their junior entry program. In addition to our academic resources, students have tons of campus resources at their disposal between transportation on campus, student disability services, and our health services uh, and recreational services. We have tons of stuff to do um, on campus and around town. Uh, getting involved is super important. We have over 300 clubs and organizations to choose from. There is truly something for everybody um, from Greek life, student government, academic clubs and honor societies, religious groups, special interest groups. Um, you'll also learn about our traditions, just like any family. We have our own ways to communicate and our own sayings. Uh, so if you come to Ole Miss, we'll have you doing the hottie toddy chant and getting your fins up in no time. Um, transfer scholarships. That's I'm not coming unless you give me money. Uh, these are all of our, or most of our automatic scholarships. Um, so if you're a Phi Theta Kappa member with at least 48 completed transferable community college credits um, and 3.5 or higher GPA, you get $8,000 a year, which basically covers our in-state tuition. Um, and if you're out of state, uh, like you are in Tennessee, um, you get an additional $7,000 a year. So really you're getting $15,000 a year um, automatically, which stacks with all other scholarships except for community college excellence right above. Um, and that's about the, the out-of-state fee. Um, community college academic excellence is for students who are not PTK. Um, and if you don't know what PTK is, please send me a message and I will let you know because it's super awesome. Um, but other automatic scholarships like community college student body president and PTK president, if you're an Eagle Scout, all stacks with your your federal aid as well. Um, competitive scholarships, our competitive deadline is on March 1st. 
Um, so I highly encourage you to apply early and ask lots of questions. Our most prestigious is our Lyceum scholarship. It's full in state tuition. And if you are PTK, that will stack with PTK, um, making that a whole lot of money. Um, so just some specific scholarships for you there. Um, and for non-traditional students, we do have options as well, like our OSHA re-entry scholarship, which is for our adult learners who are returning. Uh, the next steps is to apply. Again, apply early. You can do it through our institutional app or on the Common app. I tend to like our institutional app because it asks you a lot less questions. Um, also, make sure you send us all of your transcripts. If you have, uh, if you're getting your associate's degree, that's probably all you need. But if you're not sure whether to send your high school transcripts and test scores, get with me and I will help you out because we may not even need that. FAFSA, fill out your FAFSA. Um, and then any special programs, scholarship applications, honors college application, um, work on that as well. And of course, please come and visit us um, because you don't know what it's like from pictures on the internet, you have to come and experience Oxford um, and the university and, and get to know and see how you feel when you come and visit. Uh, I hope you consider Ole Miss as your transfer destination. Uh, and again, my name is Amy Bernstein, and I would love to answer any questions at the end and connect with you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you as well, Amy. Um, up next, we're going to have University of North Alabama. All right. Hey, I am Lauren Beasley. I am the uh, transfer admissions counselor at the University of North Alabama. We are in Florence, Alabama, so kind of the northwest corner of the state. Um, we have about 8,000 students, so we're a good medium-sized school, and we have a 19 to 1 student to teacher ratio, so we have pretty small class sizes um, since we're not a large university. Um, we were established in 1830. Um, we were established as a teacher's college originally. Obviously, we have expanded. Um, so here you can see that we do have the College of Business um, College of Arts and Sciences, which is kind of all encompassing of um, marine biology, industrial hygiene, which are kind of unique um, to four-year universities, um, and our humanities, such as uh, history and uh, political science, criminal justice. Um, we also have a College of Nursing, so our nursing program, this, uh, this last spring semester, we had a 98% pass rate on the NCLEX, so we have a great nursing program, um, and like I mentioned, we do have um, College of Education. Um, over to the left, you can see how you can go online and create a MyUNA account, and that is where I would encourage you to um, go online and create an account because you can do your application. We're actually waiving the application fee until the end of the year, um, and you can also schedule a campus visit. So we are giving campus tours. Um, we limit to one family, um, so it is it, it's an individual campus tour. You can meet with different departments. Um, whenever you apply, you'll just need to submit your transcripts from um, any college that you've attended, and we don't have a specific GPA requirement. Um, so we just require that you're in good standing at the last college that you attended. Um, we do have two transfer scholarships. So the Phi Theta Kappa Transfer Scholarship, if you are a member of this organization, it is a $4,500 scholarship. Um, we just require that you have a 3.25 and 30 transferable hours, um, and you have to have your Phi Theta Kappa advisor submit a letter of good standing, and they can email that to me. Um, and you don't have to do a separate application for that. You just have to turn in all of your admissions items by um, the deadline for whichever term you plan to attend. Um, we also do have a housing scholarship. If you're receiving the Phi Theta Kappa scholarship um, and you have a 3.75 GPA, then it's automatically awarded. Um, we also have a community college scholarship. So if you're not in Phi Theta Kappa, um, we have another option for you. So it's $2,500, a 3.0 and 30 transferable hours. Um, also, if you are out of state, we do have a few counties um, in Tennessee that automatically qualify for in-state. Um, but if you aren't in one of those counties and you're interested in UNA and you receive one of these scholarships, then you will automatically receive in-state tuition as well. Um, these two scholarships are not stackable. You can only receive one, but any other um, scholarship money that you may receive from Honors College, um, anything like that, you can stack that scholarship. Another um, big question that I normally get is how do my classes transfer? So we have two ways that you can see how classes will transfer. Um, we've got a transfer credit equivalency chart on our website where you can um, pick and choose which school and just see how individual classes will transfer. We also have transferology, so you can see um, how classes will transfer into a specific, a specific program at UNA um, in, in case there's different things you're interested in. You're not sure how your classes will transfer into those programs. 
Um, if you do have any questions, you can always email me. Um, my contact information is below um, and I hope to see you at UNA. Great, thank you so much. Um, up next, we're gonna turn it to Western Carolina University. All right, thank you. So my name is Hannah Scott. I'm an assistant director for undergraduate admissions on the transfer team at WCU. You can see a picture of our campus here. We are located in Cullowhee, North Carolina, which is in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. Um, if you're familiar with Asheville, we are one hour west of Asheville, um, located in the Valley. We have a little over 12,000 students, so we are a mid-sized regional public institution, and we are part of the UNC system, the 16 public colleges in the UNC system. Um, though we are a larger institution, we do like to uh, maintain kind of a smaller feel on campus. And so you can kind of see how campus is encompassed in um, a smaller geographical area. We have one road that goes completely around campus. So you really do feel like you're in a small city when you're with us. Because of that, we have a small student to faculty ratio of 17 to 1. Um, we also, though, do offer over 120 different majors and minors, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those as well. Um, our average transfer and entering GPA is a 3.0 cumulative, um, and we are an accredited institution. So a little bit about our student life. We have over 170 different student clubs and organizations. That also includes club and intramural sports. So anything from Quidditch to Battleship to softball, kickball, we offer all of that to our students. Um, we also have Waffle Club, Japanese Club, English Club. So really there is a great variety. Um, we've been voted Southeast number one outdoor adventure college for the past seven years. We also do offer Greek life for fraternities and sororities, um, CPC, MPHC, and IFC. We have 16 different um, athletic teams through the university and we are the Catamounts. Um, we are the only Catamount mascot in the nation uh, that has a football team. So we are the Catamounts, and we also are home to a national award-winning marching band, Pride of the Mountains Marching Band. You may have seen us in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade last year. We also put an emphasis on building community and finding your people. Um, we have many different events hosted by our Black Student Union, as well as LASSO, which is our Latino Appreciation student organization. Um, and a lot of those are housed in our intercultural affairs office. Uh, really what they do is try to promote diversity and inclusion on campus by programming and offering different options for students in terms of finding community, finding housing, and really finding your people um, in Kaloe. We also new this year have Resilient Independent Student Association, which is focused on independent and first generation students. In addition to all of that, we also like to celebrate our international students on campus and we like to celebrate our partnerships with 63 different countries around the world by sending our students to study abroad. Students who study abroad pay the same tuition to WCU and are able to go to any of our partnered um, countries. So a little bit more about our academics since we've heard about student life. Like I said before, we offer over 120 different degrees, majors, concentrations, and minors. Um, some of our larger programs are psychology and education, um, but we have everything from an accredited engineering school, nursing, anthropology, um, to physical therapy. So there's really a wide variety for students. Um, we also do offer master's and um, doctoral degrees as well if students do choose to stay at WCU. Um, we also host UNC's largest and longest running residential honors college. More than 1300 students are able to live on campus in a specific residence hall for honor students only. Um, we've also been the top 10 each year the last decade for the number of research projects from our students that have been accepted at the National Conference on Undergraduate Research. 
In terms of distance learning, these are fully online programs. Sometimes we do know that um, North Carolina is a little bit further away. And so we do offer some fully online programs. Um, you can see the programs listed in the middle. Some of our most popular are Birth to Kindergarten, the RN to BSN program, and Criminal Justice. Um, now you'll see that the distance learning tuition is prorated per credit hour. So for in-state students, they're looking at 5388. Out-of-state students are looking at 18902. That's part of an NC Promise tuition guarantee. So NC Promise is um, supplemented by the state of North Carolina, and there's only three students in or three institutions in North Carolina that are a part of this promise. And so what that means is that our students are paying a reduced, reduced tuition cost. So for an out-of-state student for tuition, fees, textbooks, housing, and meal plans, they're paying right at $19,000 a year before financial aid or scholarships. So transferring to the university, what we look for for students who are transferring to the university as um, students who have completed college coursework, if you've completed more than 24 hours of college coursework, or if you're over the age of 21, we would accept your undergraduate transfer application, application fee, and official college transcripts. If you're under the age of 21 and have not completed at least 24 hours of college credit, we then also request a high school transcript and test scores if you have them for 2021, because we are um, test optional for this coming academic year. So the application process for transfer students is submitting the undergraduate transfer application, the application fee, and official college transcripts, high school transcripts, and test scores if they apply to you. We'd love for you to come visit if you're able to. We do offer in-person open houses, in-person tours, and virtual visits. You can find all of that information on our website. And my contact information is here on the end for the Office of Admission. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat as well. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, and now we're gonna turn it over to Southern Arkansas University. Hey everyone, my name is Madison Hopkins. I'm an admissions counselor at Southern Arkansas University. Let me get this pulled up right fast. Okay, so SAU is located in um, the heart of Southwest Arkansas. Um, so you'll see our little Muratter logo there. So we are home of the Muratters. Um, and in that picture, you will see Abby Guin and Molly Ann, um, our beloved mule. We are, I would say a medium sized university. We have about 4,500 students. Um, so with that, we're gonna have a lot smaller size classes. Um, we have a 16 to one student teacher ratio. And truthfully, even once you get into your upper level classes um, as a transfer student, you probably will have all of your gen eds taken. So it could probably most likely be smaller than that 16 to one student teacher ratio. Um, we have a lot of different sports options and um, we are part of the NCAA Division II Great American Conference. We have been named the sixth most affordable university in the United States. And um, coming from a small town in South Arkansas, um, we're very proud of that to be able to offer um, such great affordability to our students. Our university is divided up into four different colleges. So we have the College of Business, College of Education, Liberal and Performing Arts, and Science and Engineering. Each of these colleges are accredited. Um, we recently, within the past year and a half, have gotten our engineering accreditation. So we're still very excited to offer that to our students. Um, and each, like I said, each college has their own accreditation. And so um, all of those different things can be found on our website. This page has a few of just our more unique programs at SAU. We do have most of your traditional programs um, on top of all of these. So this certainly is not an all-inclusive list. We have a little more than 80 um, different degree programs to offer our students. So on this list, you'll see business things, um, our engineering programs, which we have welding engineering, if you're interested in that. Um, we were founded as an agriculture school. So um, agriculture is still a large part of our campus. We recently started offering cyber criminology, pre-art therapy, um, a poultry science degree, and also public health. 
On top of these undergraduate degrees, we also um, have a full list of master's programs and the class of 2021 20, will be our first doctoral program as well. Here is a list of our sports programs that we offer. Um, if you're interested in transferring and becoming part of Murata Athletics, um, I would love to put you in contact with the coaches. Um, not only do we have these official Murata Athletic teams, but we also have club teams, um, including our fishing team, esports, and um, trap shooting as well. For our students, we have, like to have a lot of fun on campus, um, and in that is included our intramural sports. And so you can see that um, list there, which one again, once again, is not an all-inclusive list. Those are just kind of some of the highlights. Uh, a lot of our students participate in our intramural sports, and um, it is a, a good old time. So on campus, we have 17 different residence halls. Several of those residence halls are um, upper class only. So um, as a transfer student, you would definitely get a great opportunity to live um, in one of our really nice facilities. We have our blue and gold cafeteria, which is located in our Reynolds Center. And then we also have Panda Express, Girl Works, Chick-fil-A. Um, our Java City, which is our coffee shop on campus, is about to be a Starbucks. And we also have Subway on our campus as well. Here is just a random collage of different student activities that we have. Um, we do have Greek life on our campus. So we have 17 different fraternities and sororities for our students to choose to be a part of. Um, we have student government and every department has their own clubs and organizations. Um, we have a phenomenal band. And I mean, the list kind of goes on and on. Um, there's a ton of different things for our students to get involved with. This is actually our undergraduate scholarships, but this small paragraph. So um, we take students who have 30 credit hours or more, um, and you'll be eligible for this $3,000 a semester scholarship for transfer students. And um, just be known that this is only awarded in the fall. So if you're interested in transferring to SAU and you would qualify for this $3,000 a semester scholarship, um, it is only eligible for the fall. And just to kind of put it into perspective a little bit, that $3,000 per semester is really great scholarship simply because our tuition um, is 3210, so $3,210 a semester. And so based off of that one scholarship alone, not including any other federal student aid that you receive, that almost covers all of your tuition. This um, was our preview days, but they are actually completely full now um, at the time of this seminar. So um, we do offer in-person tours though, and we would love to have you come visit on campus. We have a free application and um, you can find that on our website as well. So if you need help with that, um, here is my contact information and I would absolutely love to help you any way that I can. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you as well. And last but not least, we have University of Arkansas. All right. All right. Well, I'm Olga Garcia. I'm from the University of Arkansas. Uh, University of Arkansas is nationally competitive, student-centered research university. We're in the top 2.7% of research universities in the country. Um, we are also located in Fayetteville, which is in the top five best places to live, according to U.S. News and World Report. We're also in the top 25 outdoor colleges, according to Outside Magazine. Um, for information where you can find information about transfer, uh, for transfer students, you can go to transfer.uark.edu. And we have a lot of great resources on there, including some of the information that I'm gonna talk about here in just a moment. If you are not familiar with the Northwest Arkansas area, which is where Fayetteville, the campus of the University of Arkansas is located, uh, we have a lot of great things going on in this area. So we have Crystal Bridges, which is an art museum, farmer's markets, uh, when it's not super cold outside like it is today, the Razorback Greenway for cyclist enthusiasts. Um, we have a lot of outdoors, uh, things that you can do. So if you like waterfalls, bluffs, hiking, any of that, maybe canoeing, we have a lot of that going on in this area. 
We on campus have 400 plus student organizations. So if you're interested in um, the pre-vet club or maybe you're interested in, in going to med school eventually, you can do the pre-med club. Um, so we have a lot of a variety of organizations, student-led organizations. Um, you can also receive funding from student government so you can go on conferences and learn different um, aspects of leadership. Um, and other soft skills that you can utilize in the workforce. We have 200 plus um, academic programs on our campus. And um, so those can vary, you know, bachelor's, master's, doctorate programs, graduate certificates. So if you know that you would like to maybe continue on to graduate school after completing a bachelor's, we definitely have a lot of um, options for you. We are also, um, we have some transfer student communities on our campus. So if you know you would like to live on campus, we have some that are very popular, popular with transfer students. We have an apartment style um, residence hall, as well as a few others that are a little bit more of the traditional um, residence halls. We have an 18 to one student faculty ratio. That's around 87% um, of our classes. Um, so some of the classes that you may be taking, especially if you're completing an associates already before transferring, um, will be a lot smaller because they'll be more major specific. And, okay, um, our uh, campus is a little bit a larger campus. We are actually the largest in the state of Arkansas. We have a population, student population of around 27,000. 562 students as of this past term. Um, some of our traditions on our campus is Senior Walk, which is an awesome tradition as an alumni from the University of Arkansas. Um, it's definitely something that I look forward to showing to my kids one day and my family whenever um, they're in town, um, because it's definitely proof of the commitment that you leave um, on campus and as well as it's just a beautiful way of showing that you completed your degree um, and that you left your mark on this campus. We also have some of the um, some great study abroad programs and some of the best financial assistance. So a little bit more about the admission process. So we have two different student classifications, a new transfer student and a transfer freshman student. Um, before I dive deeper into that, some deadlines to keep in mind. While we are, we do have a rolling admission process, um, these are just soft deadlines. So if you're wanting to apply for the spring semester, December 15th is a recommended uh, timeline. Um, August 1st for a student that's wanting to start a fall term. Again, um, these are soft deadlines, so I encourage you to apply as early as possible the semester before you're anticipating to start. So a new transfer student will have more than 24 transferable hours. So for you students that are completing an associates, associates of arts, associates of science, we're just looking at your college GPA. So you have to have a 2.0 uh, cumulative GPA for your college coursework. And we do need uh, college transcripts from all schools that you've attended. Now, for a student that's transferring prior or before um, completing an associate's degree, if you have less than 24 transferable hours, you're considered a transfer freshman classification, and so you'll have to present also high school and test scores. Now, for our international students, I am from the Domestic Undergraduate Admissions Office, um, so our international admissions office can assist you with those requirements. For more information, you can go to iao.uark.edu. These are some tools that students can use to ensure that credits are gonna be transferring. And those are our course equivalency guide, which will show you um, all that transfers from your institution and the transfer planning guide, which you can select the major you're interested in and your transferring institution. And it'll populate course codes that will satisfy that degree plan. Um, something that you will get after admission is the transfer credit report. And so that will allow you to see what is applicable, um, what transfers, and then the degree audit will tell you what's applicable. Now, for students that may want to change majors, we also have a what if you'd like to change to X major. Um, and so that shows you how those degree plans will look. And these are our scholarships. So just making sure that you apply with plenty of time for students that are wanting to start a spring term, term October 15th is that deadline. For students wanting to start a fall term, April 1st will be that deadline. So we have quite a bit of scholarships. One that I wanna mention is the non-resident tuition award. And that is an automatic scholarship that students get evaluated for. And that is a value of around 14,000. That's, um, that's an automatic one. And the other ones you have to complete the application for. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can set up a visit by going to visit.uark.edu. Again, my name is Olga and I'm happy to assist with any questions. Thanks. Great, thank you all panelists. Um, it looks like we do have quite a bit of extra time. 
So if you all want to answer any questions you got verbally or a question that I like to ask when we have extra time um, of you guys are, do your schools have any fun or long lasting traditions that students and staff participate in? I guess I'll go. Um, so we actually have a live lion on our campus. So his name is Leo. Um, and we usually have a big birthday party for him um, in the spring. To, um, his birthday is actually November, but we celebrate it in the spring because our first Leo's birthday was then. Um, and we also have a fountain on campus that um, we're getting a new one soon, hopefully. And um, the old one broke. And we have something on the first day of class called the Lucky Dip. So you take your pencil and you dip it in the fountain for good luck to get A's all year. Um, so we have an unofficial tradition uh, called the first year bucket list. Some people call it the freshman bucket list, but I was a transfer student. So we call that first year bucket list. Um, and you can Google it. I won't go through all of them, but one of them is making it to the top bowl of the Mew Pie Fountain on our campus. And it's really tall and there's three different bowls. And if you're short, probably not making it past number one, um, but that's one of them. Um, so I would just ask your friends when you come to campus, I mean, you can Google it, but that takes all the fun out of it, but ask your roommates, um, about the first year bucket list. Um, also we have a place on the square called secret grilled cheese, which I know like I'm letting the secret cats out of the bag. Um, <laughs> but it's a grilled cheese speakeasy in town. That's only open for a couple hours, um, two or three days a week. Um, and that's it. I won't tell you anything else. Ask your friends. Some of the traditions that we have, I kind of touched base on with senior walk and um, again from University of Arkansas here, um, a senior walk and learning the our hog call, the, the woo pig suey razorbacks, uh, which is a really unique call. Um, but we have some other types of traditions too on our campus. Um, we have a, a like what's called, what looks like a rock, but um, it fell from a building um, that we have. It's called Spear for Stone. And so if you touch that, it's supposed to give you good luck in marriage or romantic relationships. I'm a little darker now, sorry. Um, when at Western, we have a, a clock tower around the center of campus, and that is our alumni tower. So the saying goes, if you walk under the clock tower rather than around it, every time you walk underneath it, it adds an extra semester um, to being at WCU. So you'll see students avoid it like the plague while they're there, but then graduation day is always really nice to take cap and gown pictures underneath. Um, we also just have um, the mountains around us. So a lot of our students will go up. The picture that's behind me, um, was taken from the overlook. We have an airport, a small private airport right above campus where students like to go take pictures, um, see the airplanes fly off. It's just a great spot for stargazing. Our astronomy classes go up there. Uh, so that's fantastic. And then we're also 30 minutes from Cherokee. Um, so students will go onto the reservation, hike, um, get to kind of experience that culture. So it's kind of all those things that we encourage them to do as a part of a bucket list that was mentioned earlier. Hey everybody, at um, Southern Arkansas University, we have all types of pretty quirky traditions and different things like that. So um, obviously Molly Ann, our mule, is a pretty big part of that. Um, she is at almost every event that we have and at our football games, if we get a touchdown, Abby G is gonna ride her back and forth in the end zone. And um, last week was actually our homecoming. And so we have street painting, um, well, under normal non-COVID circumstances, um, we'll have a normal street painting. And then after street painting, everyone will go out to our alumni center and we have a great camp out. Everyone kind of decks their camping spot out and it's a competition to see who has the best. And um, you can actually win money for your club and organization doing that. Um, we have a farm road that circles our campus and 
if you like cows, there's actually cows out in the middle of it and stuff. So um, in the spring where they're calving, it's always a lot of fun, but a lot of students will ride bikes and run and walk and, um, you know, take their dogs, whatever they want to do um, around the farm road. And we also have several different ponds on our campus. And so a lot of students like to fish as well. So um, unfortunately we do not have mountains. We are in very flat South Arkansas, but we do have a lot of other outside um, activities that you can get involved with. And um, there's a lot of really cool places around uh, Magnolia, like you can go digging for diamonds or um, we're only a short drive from Shreveport, different places like that. Thank you all for sharing all those fun traditions. Um, and so lastly, just any lingering advice, words of wisdom to students that you guys could share? Uh, my best advice, and it's not specific to Ole Miss, is um, make sure you like what you're majoring in. Um, but furthermore, think about what you wanna do for a career. Um, think about your dream job, find the person who has your dream job, the person you see and think, wow, I could do that every day, or I really want to do that every day. Ask them what they majored in, ask them what their background is, um, in education and kind of go from there, uh, talk to your admissions counselors, tell them your, your aspirations. And we could probably hook you up with somebody on campus, um, to help you reach your goals a little bit, a little bit quicker or help you make those connections for once you graduate. Um, so just, that's my best advice. And again, not specific to Ole Miss, um, just in general. I always like to advise students to make sure that they go check out every campus that they're interested in. I know even whenever I was trying to select where I was gonna attend college at, I kind of got caught up in the, well, I know about this place or I know someone who went here, you know, different different things like that. And so I just encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone. Um, if that's where you're supposed to be, I truly believe that whenever you step on campus, you're going to, you're going to feel like that's where you're supposed to be at. And so um, even if it's not necessarily, you know, one of these people that we just presented to you about our wonderful universities, you know, explore, look at all your options and think outside of the box and be willing to, to try somewhere else that you might not have necessarily thought about. Yeah, to add to that great advice um, that these ladies provided, I would also say if it's possible to try to do a study abroad, um, I know transfer students, you may have a certain timeline that you would like to be done with your bachelor's, but even if it's, you know, maybe a summer program, um, I think that really adds a different layer um, that, that will be very useful when you go into the workforce. And then I would also say, um, you know, as Madison had said, visiting campuses, and as Amy had said about um, making sure to, to think about your end goals, I would also say um, asking questions about, you know, what those prerequisites are to get into programs. So making sure that you have those specific classes completed. definitely get involved in student organizations on campus um, even if there isn't necessarily something that you think you would like you could always try it out um, the skills that you'll learn in those student organizations and leadership roles um, social skills all of those um, just as much as you're being prepared in your academic classes for a future job those social skills will help you just as much too Thank you all so much. And now I will wrap it up for our students. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, when you close the screen, there's gonna be a quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback you might have. Um, there are a couple more sessions, so go ahead and sign up for those. And a recording of this session will be available in the next couple of days on the StriveScan website. So thank you all so much and have a good rest of your night.